Hey, welcome back. I'm Sarah and this is Thrills and Kills Booktube. Today I'm talking about my November reading plans. Lots of exciting stuff happening in November. I am filming this in October. It's not quite Halloween yet, which is why we've still got very spooky vibes going on. Today's spooky t-shirt is my friend's Halloween shirt. So get something good to drink, sit back, and let's talk about what we're doing in November. All right, like I mentioned, there are a lot of fun things happening in November. I particularly read horror, thrillers, and true crime. That's what I focus on. So even though it's no longer going to be October, we're keeping the spooky vibes going. I really struggle with following TBRs, like full-blown checklists. Um, I'm a mood reader. I also have ADHD. And just depending on what's going on, I may or may not stick to a plan from one day to the next. Um, October, I did a pretty decent job. But that, I think, is because rather than make a very solid list, what I do is pick some like events or buddy reads that I want to join in on. But then that's only about 50% of the month and the rest of the month it's open to mood reading or if I don't want to read at all, maybe I just want to binge Netflix all weekend. The first thing that I will be participating in is my friend Kelsey over at Slime and Slashers. She has put together a month long readathon for November, but this is special because this is a nostalgic November readathon. If you're not familiar with her channel, I would urge you to go check it out and subscribe. So I'm a fellow um, older millennial, born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s, early 2000s. And so if you really enjoy that time, I hate to say in history because that makes me feel old, but that time in history, um, think about Nickelodeon Slime and um, Fern Gully, growing up before the internet, <laughs> uh, Arl Stein Goosebumps and Fear Street. If you enjoy that kind of stuff, you will really love her channel. That is really where she excels and what she focuses on and she has the best personality. She's so fun to watch. So I'm very excited to participate in her readathon. Um, there are multiple prompts. I'm going to include some photos here. She has uh, a video where she explains all of her prompts. She goes over them and she also has a Google Drive folder that you can go and access. So you can see description of the prompt and she even has some book recommendations for you. You don't have to read hard to participate. It's any genre that you prefer to read. So I am going to focus on two prompts. Um, if I should do more, great, <laughs> but I'm trying not, like I said, trying to limit myself to be very, um, go with the flow for November. Now the first prompt is the page master prompt which is either there's a book on the cover, it's about a book, it's about an author. So what I'm going to do is read a book called Gothic. Now I recently discussed this book in a video um, about five horror arcs, advanced reader copies that I plan on reading soon. So I'll put a little picture here of the book. It's called Gothic by Philip Fricasse. And we follow a horror author in his 50s and he is sort of feeling like his heyday is behind him. He's not sure if he's ever gonna write a good horror book again. And his wife named Sarah um, is trying to inspire him and she buys him a gift of this really beautiful antique writing desk. And as he's spending more time writing at this desk, these ideas are coming to him and he's fur furiously writing a new book. Oh my gosh, I lost my earring. <laughs> he's furiously writing a new book and he's just feeling so inspired and the book is darker and more violent and just more horrific than anything he's ever written before. And his publishers are eating it up and they're like, oh my God, this is gonna be a bestseller. This is the best thing you've ever written. And so he doesn't wanna part with the desk because he feels like that is what's leading to his success. Also, in a secondary plot that's happening, point of view in the story, there is a woman who has been searching for this cursed desk for years and years that her family has been looking for and she's using a private detective to try and track it down. And lo and behold, it is in this gentleman's house. So it is a possession uh, story about a cursed object, the writing desk. I think it sounds really good and I am really excited to read that for the page master prompt. 
The second book I'm going to read would be, um, it's going to fall under the Fern Gully prompt, which is a book either about nature or nature on the cover. So if you're not familiar, um, Fern Gully was an animated movie that came out in the early 90s and it's about a rainforest and human destruction of said rainforest and how these fairies and these animals are trying to protect their home. Uh, one of the best movies ever made. So while I was doing some research for what book I was going to do, what prompts I wanted to do, I started trying to find clips. So I found this little gif. I'm not sure if I can include clips in the movie without copyright, but um, anyways, it just put me down a rabbit hole of then listening to the batty rap. And then I was like walking around my house singing it. So if you're not familiar, there's this bat and he was voiced by Robin Williams and he used to be um, held for experiments and he's now out free <laughs> in this Ferngully rainforest. And he's sort of warning the fairies and the other animals about humans and how dangerous humans can be. So there's this whole, let's get batty rap that goes on. So cause I was singing it to my dogs. It's like, they used and abused me, battered and bruised me. So it's a bop. If, you, <laughs> if you've never watched it, you should go look it up. It's fun. Anyways, um, I, I can remember being in kindergarten and my kindergarten teacher had painted a whole mural of Fern Gully and we learned about the rainforest and Earth Day and Mother Earth and why we want to do our part to protect the Earth. So I, I have very fond memories of that movie. I'm going to be reading a book that's also going to double as a book club pick for this year and it's called Hell's Half Acre. Now I'm excited to read this book because it is about uh, it's a true story. It's a true crime book happened in the 1800s in Kansas. There was a family of serial killers who um, one day they just up and left, but the townspeople came across their homestead looking for them and they found remains of a human like slaughter pen basically at their at their homestead. And I guess it really shocked the nation and it was in all kinds of newspaper headlines and people were really intrigued about this story and what could drive a whole family to do such a horrific thing. Yeah, true story happened in Kansas. So the cover has like the farmland, wide open prairie of Kansas on it. So I thought that fit as far as uh, a nature cover for the Fern Gully prompt. That's gonna be my two books for Kelsey's November Nostalgia Readathon. Uh, I'll link her video down below if you wanna find out more about that, but let me know if you are also gonna participate. It is also nonfiction November. And if you're not aware, it just tends to be a month where people try to focus on reading more nonfiction than they normally would. Now there is a booktuber named a book Olive. Again, all this will be linked down below. And she created prompts around this and, and a whole month long event. And she's got a great video where she goes over her four prompts for the year and she even gives book recommendations. And so she just gives words and it's up to you to interpret the word in whatever manner you want and then to find books to fit that. So I am doing um, two books and I, I can make an argument for one of these books fitting two prompts. There are four prompt words, like I said, I'm gonna focus on secret, record, and element. So this first book, I also got it as an ARC, an advanced reader copy, and I'm going to read for the secret slash record prompt. And this is going to be Starvation Heights by Greg Olson. This is also a true crime story and this follows a Dr. Um, Linda Burfield out in Washington state and she was known for running weight loss programs and people would come from all over to her to follow her, her weight loss um, programs and live there but she was ending up starving people to death and somehow this is being kept hidden for so long which is why I think it falls under secret but then also record as in criminal record and um, a record of history that happened. I think that's how you could interpret that. But uh, mostly the story follows these two rich British <laughs> heiresses and they had traveled all the way to Washington State in the Pacific Northwest to stay at her, um, her compound and follow her program. And unfortunately one did end up starving to death. And even as the one sister was starving to death, the other sister was still so adamant that like doctor, this doctor was saving them and she was so fantastic and wonderful and was singing her praises and saw nothing wrong with what was happening as her sister just died. So I think that's really interesting how that could possibly be, how someone's mind could be essentially so brainwashed or that you could be so desperate um, to see the outcomes you want to see that you're willing to follow this person to death. 
So anyways, that's gonna be the first one I'll read for Nonfiction November. The second one, um, I actually have it here. I recently bought this and got it in the mail. And I'm going to read this for the element prompt. And this is called Nightmare Fuel by Nina Nesseth. So this is about why do we like scary movies, the psychology behind why humans like to be scared, why is horror such a popular genre? So element, I'm, I'm interpreting this as the element of fear. So let me read you a little bit from the little dust jacket. Uh, it says in Nightmare Fuel, Nesseth explores the strange and often unexpected science of fear through the lens of psychology and physiology. How do horror films get under our skin? What about them keeps us up at night, even days later? Horror films promise an experience, fear. From monsters that hide in plain sight to tension building scores, every aspect of a horror film is crafted to make your skin crawl. Uh, and it says that they even have in-depth discussions and spotlight features of some of horror's most popular films from classics like The Exorcist to modern hits like Hereditary and interviews with directors, film editors, composers, and horror academics. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. The Exorcist and Hereditary are two of my favorite horror films. I recently made a video where I went back and read The Exorcist for the first time and compared it to the movie. So I'll link that here if you're interested in catching that and seeing which one I prefer. Now, so those are my two books for nonfiction November. Next up, if you weren't aware, I actually have a book club called the Dark and Twisty Book Club. And it's over on the book clubs app or bookclubs.com. It's very laid back. We don't schedule live discussions. We don't even say you need to read the book by a certain date. I just create a discussion thread. And when you read it, you read it and you go put up your thoughts and people talk about it. With, you know, with a goal by reading it by the end of the month, obviously. We do a shorter and a longer pick so that way people have flexibility depending on, you know, their time constraints. So for, the month of November, they have picked two books, one of which is Hell's Half Acre, which I've already discussed for Kelsey's readathon. Uh, but the other one they're reading this month for the shorter version will be Adam Neville's, one moment, The Vessel. So this technically comes out on Halloween. I got it in my Nightworms box. I'll, I can link that up here too, where I, um, on, where I opened that and showed you everything I got in the box. I finished it really quickly. I really enjoyed it. I believe I gave it four stars. Um, he's great. And that cover is so freaking scary. So those are my two books for my book club. And then there are some arcs I wanna start getting through. I'm prioritizing Gothic by Philip Fricasse, which I've already mentioned here as far as the page master prompt for Kelsey's readathon. If I have time and I can get to it, I would also like to read um, Spite House. That is coming out, I believe, in February of 2023. It's this man and his children. He's basically trying to escape his past. And he there's something, we don't know what from the description, but something is following and chasing him and his family. So him and his kids, every so often, every few days, every few weeks, have to pick up and move somewhere new. And so he can't keep a steady job. It's very hard, you know, when you don't have references and you're not reliable and you have to keep moving. But finally, he finds uh, an opening for a caretaker job of this old house down in Texas. And he goes down there uh, and horror ensues. So that's all I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you more once I read it. And hopefully I like that. So those are my two arcs. Well, actually, you know what? Let me, I take that back. Starvation Heights is technically also an arc. It was originally released in the 90s. It's a republication, I believe. So technically that's three arcs I'd like to get to. The trick is to double dip and, <laughs> and put these books, plug them in multiple spots. So that way you're tricking your brain into thinking you're following more of a TBR list than you did. I am also doing a group buddy read. Uh, if you don't know MJ over at Reading This Life, I'm gonna put her stuff down below. You can go follow her. She has a fantastic Discord. It's a very supportive um, book tube, like book reader community over on Discord. People who read all different types of genres. She does lives every other Saturday as sort of a support group for people who are new to booktube and she does a lot of shout outs for smaller booktubers. So she is fantastic. Please go check her out. And she had put up on her discord, does anyone want to read Tender is the Flesh around Thanksgiving? So I thought that was kind of funny. I'm waiting for my copy to come from the library, but I'll put a picture here in the meantime. This is about cannibalism. This is a book out of Argentina, I believe. It's been getting a lot of good reviews. It's, it's um, 
sort of a dystopian future where something has happened, some sort of parasite or illness, something has happened where humans can no longer eat animal meat. And so in order to get protein, they have turned to cannibalism because why not? I guess, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Uh, so we're following um, a young man whose job is to work in the slaughterhouse. And yeah, so that's all I wanna know before going into it. I try not to know a whole lot of information. I'm excited to read that with the group see what everyone thought. Um, I'm a little bit nervous just because I love to eat red meat. I just don't want to get any like, ugh, you know, grossness, <laughs> um, get grossed out and not want to eat that. Um, my neighbor actually has, my next door neighbor is a huge farm and they do grass fed beef. And I, so I eat a lot of really healthy grass fed beef from her. And I just, I don't want my whole freezer full to go to waste if I <laughs> get grossed out. Um, but we're gonna read that around Thanksgiving. I'm having surgery right before Thanksgiving. So I'll have a lot of downtime to sit around and read. I'm sure I will be able to get to that one, no problem. All right, and then the other thing I'm doing, I'm starting this right around now. It's not technically a book I'll read, uh, or not technically a book I'll complete in November, but I am going to do a rereading of Turn of the Screw by Henry James. So one moment, let me get that for you. Okay, so The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. This is one of my favorite books you may have seen the Mike Flanagan series on Netflix uh, called The Haunting of Bly Manor. It's a retelling of this book. Um, now, this book was originally written in uh, the 1800s, but it wasn't a book. It was a serialized publication, meaning it was published in like a paid um, literature, um, newspaper editorial that came out every week but you would only get maybe a chapter or two or three. And so every few chapters are sort of a mini cliffhanger that it ends on because it was meant for you to have to wait a whole week, think about what happened, look forward to getting the next set of chapters, talk about it with your friends and family, like, oh my gosh, what do you think that meant? Is that or is that happening? Is it in her head? Because it's a very psychological horror book. And uh, I, I can't claim this idea for myself. I wasn't smart enough. <laughs> I follow a fantastic YouTube account. Um, it just goes by his name, Benjamin McAvoy. Again, everything will be linked below. And he focuses on um, classics, how to critically read literature, how to do book reviews. I believe he has an English uh, degree from Oxford. He's very well-spoken, very smart, very educational. And so recently I watched one of his videos where he was discussing reading it in that manner. Now I know what happens because I've read this book before, but I am looking forward to reading it in this new way, the way it was intended. I shouldn't say new, the traditional way that it was intended to be read. Maybe I can pick up something new or maybe I'll just have a different, um, a different thought. Maybe I'll just have a different impression of the book when I have to wait a week. I just read it in one sitting like I normally would do because it is a short, about 130 pages. So if you're not familiar, um, this is following a young governess and she goes to Bly Manor to take care of this gentleman's niece and nephew named Miles and Flora. So she has one instruction. She is not to bother him because he is a very busy businessman up in London. She is to go to this country manor house, handle shit on her own and do not bother him. Okay, sounds easy enough. How bad could that be? Except for stuff starts going sideways and she's not sure if she is going crazy is the house haunted? What happened to the previous governess and her lover? Did she really kill herself? That's not a spoiler. Did she really kill herself? Did she not? Are they now haunting the children? And so she is just trying to keep these children safe at all costs. I don't know if you can hear that, but my dogs put them outside and they're still going crazy. I don't know what they're barking at. Maybe Amazon is here. So anyways, oh, and it's called the turn of the screw. My interpretation is because it is so good at every so often slowly turning up the dial on the tension, on the horror, on the creep factor. So just think about slowly turning the screw until you can no longer take it anymore. That's, that's how I interpret the title of that one. Okay, so that's all of the, I guess, TBR to-do list, like books I'm trying to plug in for certain prompts or certain um, events. I do have a few library books that I suppose I need to read these in earlier October because they will need to go back soon. Uh, I have Alice Feeney's Daisy Darker. Um, I'm excited for that one. And then I've got, this is a brand new publication. I guess I was pretty lucky to get this. This is Leech by Huron Ennis. This is sort of a science fiction, gothic -y horror book um, about parasites and medical stuff. 
Oh, and then this is, Alice Feeney is a thriller writer. So this is about a family on an isolated house. The tide comes in and they're stuck out there in that house and people start dying and they have to wait nine hours for the tide to go out and they're stuck there. Um, now, I like Alice Feeney. I prefer Ruth Ware's, because uh, that's the other big name in <laughs> thriller. I prefer Ruth Ware's uh, stories overall, the twists, how she got there, the mystery. Um, I think hers just comes together a lot better. However, I prefer Alice Feeney's writing. I think she has a beautiful way with words versus Ruth Ware is a little bit more dry, but the shock factor and the twists are better. So I'm excited to give this one a shot and see what I feel. And then I don't know, maybe that's all I'm gonna read in November, maybe not. I recently got some new books that I'm super excited about. Um, I got like Pen Pal I wanna read. I've got this um, In the House in the Dark of the Woods that's pretty short I wanna get to. So we'll see if there's just, like I said, I gotta leave room for the mood reading or maybe I don't wanna read it all. Maybe I'm gonna be recuperating from surgery and feel like crap and wanna just binge Netflix <laughs> on the couch. So that's all I've got. Um, please let me know what you are planning to read in November. Are you participating in nonfiction November? Are you doing any buddy reads? Are you doing any readathons? Because there are a few others that I know of out there. Um, I'm just sticking to the one. That's all I have today for you. So stay spooky, my friends, even though it's November. Bye.